People, 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 what's up? As we are under, what are we, two weeks away from WrestleMania right now? I guess you would say 13, 14 days, I believe. And once again, we are back in the shittiest part of the week. And once again, we have another horrible Monday Night Raw. And hijacking, folks? Oh, yeah, you're going to see a lot of hijacking on Raw in Brooklyn tonight. Brooklyn, New York. And as we are from Raw in Brooklyn again, we started off the show with Mick Foley. We actually came out to a pretty good pop. And he pretty much said he was a humbled man. And he started reading off these cards talking about he thanked Stephanie and Triple H for the opportunity of a lifetime of his job until he had to apologize for putting Mr. Sacco in Triple H's mouth. And he didn't want his personal problems. Um, distracting from WrestleMania, and he did it for the good of WWE, and immediately, effective immediately, he was going to leave his absence, but Foley tore up the paper, then pretty much screened at Triple H's index cards, index cards for 10 minutes of the show, like, I'm going to do what I want to do, I'm Mick freaking Foley, he said, actually showing some fire this time, again, but... Stephanie McMahon came out there and since they cut off his mic. Once again, once again, so Stephanie McMahon does every week on this show, emasculate, emasculate, emasculate fully every single time. And you don't want to do what's best for business, so she had two words for him. You're fired. And Sami Zayn came out, which surprisingly he came out. Sami said he was one of... Mick's idols, like Mick was one of his idols, even though we don't hear it that much, and she very much looked at Steph and said, you're everything what's wrong with, with running this place, and you shouldn't be, you should be ashamed what you be doing, the Foley and everything, and that her decisions was wrong, and you know, no one's had, no one's had the guts to tell it your, to your face, but suddenly said, you, you can, you know, take your old down, your broken down old mentor, down the stairs and stuff, you want to get him out of here. Until the fans chanted for CM Punk at her. Which I thought for a minute, I almost thought they would have chanted at Sami Zayn. But no, they're not going to chant CM Punk at Sami Zayn. And trust me, you, we're going to get a lot of CM Punk chants tonight. And I know there's a lot of butthurt people on the internet that don't like those CM Punk chants. But hey, I'm from Chicago, so it's a whole different story. We know he's not here. We know it's been over three or four years. But hey, the chants still live on, don't they? You can't stop them. Some people blame The Rock for bringing it back, but once again, Brooklyn, Brooklyn, you, listen, you're just going to see a lot of my, a lot of more CM Punk chants tonight. I'll just put it right there, but I just kind of find it funny from the internet sometimes how people get so um, pissed and butthurt about it a lot. It's it's kind of funny, really, but it does, I didn't like going during the Steph Scott Rollins segment, that I was a little bit too much about a few weeks ago. But as Sammy continued to talk, about and everything and and that Foley was more had more class as being a German manager than you ever were. And so you say you you're a talented guy and everything, but you're not on a level that you can interrupt me once again we got to emasculating again. And said so you could take you your little ska music and you know, skip back to the back and do your little dance back there. But the smart thing for you just believe right, leave right now until Samoa Joe came out. And Sammy so says, you know, what's going to be Samoa Joe versus Sami Zayn right now. So, it was a pretty much good, um, I guess good opening in a way. It wasn't much from it, even though they kind of got rid of Foley. I didn't even think Foley was coming out here, number one, after what happened last week. you think he would be uh, gone. Like, he would just immediately be fired right there after they told him to get out and stuff. But, you know, I didn't think he was going to come out. He could have had him made more of a bigger deal, but I really just wanted to get it in and out of the way really quickly. So, they just did what they did to get rid of Foley. Now, is this because he needs to go get that hip surgery he's talked about for months now? Uh, hopefully, yeah. Since he'll be gone doing a hip surgery, but let he just kind of get it in and out. Some old job when he gets Sami Zayn in. It's a good match. I'll say that. That people are actually in for him. Sammy, you know, trying to fight back, fight back with his fighting spirit and whatever, and Joe just take him out even from bleeding, so Joe won, hit the ear Nagi, hit the coquina clutch, it was over. Uh, 
after um, we had that, oh uh, god, that don't get me wrong, the Goldberg and Brock Lesnar video package graphics all night. You know, I'll say this right here, and I don't know if I said this before. It's really weird how this is, this all started from a pre order to a video game, which this WWE 2K17 is not that great of a game, anyways, because of multiple reasons. 2K needs to stop making this game. No matter, I don't care what pack thing is in it, it's still not a good game. But moving on, this went from a pre order to a video game to Goldberg getting a title and maybe main event WrestleMania. It's weird how far this has gotten. But Foley pretty much um, thanked Zane for what he did and hugged them. And he said goodbye to Cesaro and Sheamus, thanking them. And shook hands to the cruiserweights and hugged Bailey until Triple H came up and said, Have a nice day. And then they interviewed uh, Seth Rollins' doctor. And since they're 13 days away from Mania and what's going to happen, they said, uh, We don't know what's going to happen, Seth, but if he does do a WrestleMania, he'll be back here tomorrow. They said that no doctor in America will clear him. I like when somebody put up somebody, I know one doctor will clear him. Hi, everybody. Hi, Dr. Nick from. Uh, the Simpsons, that's pretty funny. Charlotte, here's, here's a match that was shitty tonight and no one gave, gave a fuck about it, and I can understand why. Charlotte winning against Dana Brooke was in a very bad match. That, and I know, I know we know what's been going on, on the internet lately. I made a little video about it, but the fans pretty much went to chanting, We want Paige. New Day style say, We want Paige. We want Paige. So, we, we all know the page situation and how that's gone down. But this match, no one really cared for it, and the fans did not care about this segment. The match it was almost like a bathroom break one. Sure, like, shout out to Dana Brooke, like it just happened just because cause Dana Brooke turned on last week, and Charlotte won with a big boot. But the crowd looked like they was getting ready to hijack that match after they started chanting, We want Paige. And stuff. But. Brooke. Dana Brooke was just whatever, but like I said, crowd was dead. They did not care because she hasn't really done that much, and just I don't say under car. I don't think she should. She need to stay back in NXT for a while. If you ask me now, but this has gone really bad with that with her Charlotte and Dana and Dana Brooke. This wasn't really a good match. Like I said, crowds with the high jack. Stephanie McMahon approached Bailey, and this is just this is good. This is sounds retarded with this Bailey and Stephanie McMahon thing. And says, Do you need a hug? And Bailey says, I don't want to hug you. And this is what weird what Bailey said. Bailey says, I admired you growing up, and I thought you were such a strong woman, but you use your power to hurt people throughout the months you know you've been on this roster. And says, so She's a strong woman, one of the kind of women's champion. And, she pretty much put um, Bailey in a no disqualification match against Nia Jax again after they won a regular match last week. And if Nia Jax won, it would be a fatal four way for the women's title. Which Bailey sounded retarded. I said, Have you been watching the show for nearly for the past 15 years? Do you know what Stephanie McMahon has done on this show to people? Do you? Like, don't you know how ruthless this woman is and horrible things she will do to you? And says, I admired you growing up, but uh, I can't believe you, you would use your power to hurt people. How many how many times has Stephanie been in charge of this show in the past? And, dude, I can go all the way back to 1999 when she first joined DX and they ran the show. And start fucking everybody over. And let's go back to the testing back then. You, I, well, I wouldn't say SmackDown when she was GM of that, but we can go back to recent memory. We can go back to the authority. Go back to her screwing over Triple H or screwing over Chris Jericho in the past. We, we can go back to my God, several many things. I'm like, it's some stuff I may have even forgot in the past. What Stephanie meant, Stephanie versus Linda, slapping her down, or her brother, or Vince, or it, 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 dude, it's it's so much you can name Stephanie McMahon. It, it's fucking insane. It's the cringe. Of this show, the main cringe of this show. So I just thought that was kind of tired. I admired it. Like, I was, you must ain't been watching the show. I don't, you ain't been watching the past 15 years to what she's done to people on the show, then you don't know what you're talking about. 
Uh, one good thing that was actually on the show was Chris Jericho to expose the real Kevin Owens. As he talked about him, Owens is his best friend, but he showed a picture of a very young Kevin Owens wearing a Y2J shirt, holding his arms out. He was marking out, man, which he actually did hype the crowd up. And he talked about a DM exchange about people pissing him off. And that, um, you know, how he helped them. said, you know, that Owens is Jericho's, um, Owens is Jericho's idol and stuff. And Jericho said, we were never best friends. He's not my friend. But you're, you're here, I'm, you know, he's here on idol and everything. You know, he's going to put that 16-year-old back where he got himself into and everything because you betrayed me. Now you're going to lose. And Jericho pretty much put his pin up. It was about to put Kevin Owens on the list, but Samoa Joe came out and distracted him as Kevin Owens pretty much attacked him from behind him with the pop up power bomb and he tore up the list. The list was destroyed. Which was actually a really good segment. And it's, it may actually Kevin Hearn Owens t- turn heel again. Well, mostly he was healed, but actually be legit healed at the people will boo him. So, you know, at least they started the show what the real Kevin Owens is all about and stuff and what he's doing. Even though they have not focused on his U.S. title and Jericho has held this belt over 30 days, how is he still holding this thing? They have not really said anything much about the title other than Owens says, I'm taking the title away from you because you cost me my title at the pay-per-view, so now I'm going to take your title. But he did tear up the list and piss people off to get some heat. TJ Perkins went against Brian Kendrick. Jesus, this match was even 90 seconds. Who gives a shit about the fucking cruiserweights at this point on Raw? That Kendrick as where Tozawa was. And he's not in the country. And you can't travel. Got your passport. And he walked off. Dude, this match was so quick. He beat him with Perkins with a slice bread number two. Did you guys have... Longer matches, and it was like 90 seconds. I don't even the crowd was already dead, so I don't even think they cared for this. But the, 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 then again, the cruiserweights suck on Raw. Who cares? Who gives a shit? No one gave a shit about this match. Roman Reigns, with his all due respect, lines again. Somebody who's going to teach Braun Strowman a lesson, and that this is his yard. Stephanie McMahon, oh Jesus, too much Stephanie on this show. Talk to say Seamus and Cesaro saying that. Oh yeah, Foley did make you guys a team, so you know what? It's gonna be a four on two. Enzo and Cass on Club versus U2, and if you lose, you lose your shot at WrestleMania in the triple threat. So, I, I, I don't know. <laughs> that, that, that didn't make sense. <laughs> I don't know, but I don't know why she's doing this now. Uh, uh, the uh, match, oh geez, the next match. Bailey, which I swear they just doing this woman very wrong. And she's a champion, by the way, but she gets beaten a lot. Versus Nia Jax in a no disqualification match that no one people didn't care. No one did not care. It got to the point where people were just chanting asshole for no reason. And I don't even know why they're chanting asshole. What I read is that people kept saying, we have floor seats. And the crowd started to chant, we, I think they started to chant, um, asshole, asshole. Next thing I know, delete, 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 delete. Like the show needs to be deleted, deleted chants. Then uh, CM Punk chants came back involved. And I, there was probably another chant I did not hear, but the crowd was like, they just went into straight up hijack mode. And then I felt like they did another, they did C chance. I heard C chance. C, 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 C. I know they're, they're talking about. They're real, but, um, it, it gets to the point where nobody was paying attention to the match. And it was just, they, were, I, I probably saw maybe a chair, but it wasn't really u- used. And it was just Nia Jax beating Bailey up and throwing her back and across from the barricade. Most of the time. But, um,. This the show was pretty much hijacked from this point that the women didn't have a good thing out there, and Bailey and Sasha are just watching from the back without a care in the world, watching this match, and you just hear the fans going asshole and delete, delete, and CM Punk and um, 
think I said, no, we are we are awesome chants and we have floor seats. So the crowd hijacked the show right there. And then Charlotte, uh, not Charlotte, Nia Jax won, beat Bailey with a Samoan drop. And now at WrestleMania, it'll be a fatal four away from the women's title. Which this is just feels random. He's multi. It's gonna be a lot of multi matches at WrestleMania, but Bailey versus Sasha versus Charlotte versus Nia Jax for the Women's Championship at WrestleMania. <clears throat> so I kept saying it may have been a fatal four way, so now we have a fatal four way. So it's whatever. But that was just bad. And what was the point of making this a fatal four way match? It's like they're just making any match at the last second. You just gotta add people in the show just because to get them inside of WrestleMania. So it's like they just been over like putting booking putting anybody in this match. Any match really. So Nia Jax is not, is in Fatal Four Away, crowd hijacked it from there. Cole was in the ring to talk to Triple H. As soon as Triple H said anything, the fans really started chanting CM Punk, CM Punk again. Which I can understand why at Triple H, but he talk, tried to talk louder over the fans, which Triple H's promo went very long, but Triple H can cut a good promo nowadays and get an O3 where he's taking almost 30 minutes of the show, but it was still long and he made himself look like the, but once again, I would say this about Triple H here, yeah. it's not Triple H, Triple H uses the logic a lot when he talks, so he almost makes himself look like the face, and he did it again, he made himself look like the face, and he upset his fault WrestleMania, uh, Rollins isn't making a WrestleMania, he said Rollins made the biggest mistake in his life when he stopped listening to him and started listening to the fans. And he says, you know what, Foley got the little, you know, potato chip here. He say, how many times have they ruined Mick Foley and everything? You ruined Foley and stuff. And at the crutch, picked up the crutch. And he took down Rollins less than 30 seconds. And, you know, how did your cheering work out for him, huh? Nothing. And he says, th th that's on you. You blame the fans. And you know, you call him the architect and everything. But who gave Rollins the blueprint and talked about the millennials running their mouths and stuff? And he says, he, he said, at this moment, I'm officially done with Seth Rollins. And he put an envelope and gave him, like, some nosebleed tickets to WrestleMania. And before he left, and he says, you know, I don't want him in the face mode right here and there. there. Triple H remember say, you know, you know, it is a way you can still fight a WrestleMania. Then, you know, I'll draw up the contract. I'll put up the papers. And, you know, Seth Rollins can't sue once I destroy him. He says, this is what you want. He says, next week, I'm going to draw up the paper where you sign the documents. WrestleMania, Triple H, Seth Rollins, the architect versus the game. And, you know, pretty much the fans cheer. He says, are oh, you a freaking coward? Before he left, so once again, Triple H almost once again, almost like last year, he makes himself sound like the face in this whole thing, even though the crowd didn't go along with a lot of stuff he said and chanted CM Punk. Once again, I told you a lot of CM Punk chants tonight, it was still a good promo, but um, he did make himself like the face. A very stupid matchup next Cesaro and Sheamus when against Gallows and Anderson in zone cast, which is so fucking stupid. Let me get this straight. Why would you want a triple threat tag team match anyways? Enzo Cass, like, oh, you can come kiss your shot at WrestleMania goodbye. Next thing you know, they beat the shit out of fucking Gallows and Anderson with throwing Gallows out the ring. And then Sheamus and Cesaro just take Carl Anderson, bro kick him. Like, 30 second max match. Who gives a fucking shit? That was bad. Dude, how bad did they have to make the club look bad every week? Jesus, you think after the tag title they booked them better? No, they're still being booked the same fucking way, like retards. So we still have a triple threat match. And if you're into and cast a smart, you may want to eliminate the competition to make it a regular match to get a fair shot at this two on two. But hey, we have a multi man match, so hey, we're just gonna beat them up anyway. And then Enzo and Cass beat up the club after, and that was it. But at least they are over out there. And then next, oh boy, how are we gonna do this? And ah, we we knew who was showing up. They talked about oh the new day, the new day, and I might take some heat for this. So you take this how you want to, but we we know who showed up next on TV. Yeah. 
So you know who showed up next on TV? The New Day, which they got a, a tremendous monster pop out there, really. And Biggie, Biggie and Kofi Cakes looked at Xavier as Xavier Woods gave this stone face look as they said to him, Is there something you want to talk about when you uh, talk about Xavier? Which we knew in the, like, the fans just started chanting, New Day rocks, or somebody said, New Day fucks, New Day fucks, like through the crowd. Like, that's how loud they were. It, and I'm just like, and I know people are going to look and see the way you say anything like about me about this. And we know the whole situation is bad. There's some that are not going to like this whole Xavier thing. There's are not going to like it and think it was bad with the whole page thing. And they look like there were people that in Brooklyn really, like they stand up and gave him a standing ovation. And gave him a monster pop. Because even, for, I guess, some from a guy's perspective, some are going to say that. He, he did something that a lot of us couldn't, a lot of guys couldn't do. And I guess let's get a crack at, um, you know, get a crack at Paige to hit that. But it looks like they, they talked about WrestleMania and stuff. And then they talked about the ice cream and everything stuff. The ice cream is going to be it. WrestleMania did a close-up on him, especially Xavier Woods face at the end. Like, like really, just, they just were talking about the ice cream where that was going to go. So... We knew that, and this is almost like the Seth Rollins situation of them making fun of it. They did Seth Rollins thing. They made a, maybe a couple of shots here about that and stuff. But New Day, they knew, we knew they had to do something. I didn't know they were going to be on the show tonight, but they did at least acknowledge it. And the crowd just, like, they just went ape shit when they uh, heard it. But we, I did hear those New Day fucks chants a little, and... Some people thought, somebody asked me on Twitter, and they said, Xavier Woods was just fucking super over. This guy is just over right now for what he's done. Some people really think he's the fucking man right now for what he did and stuff in that whole video. And I've already spoke about this whole controversy, and, you know, it's pretty messed up. And I, I've already spoke about it. I've, I may have missed something. I don't want to get into the whole NXT title thing over with Paige, but... It's, it's a lot that can be said about it. I, like I said, I already explained in the video, but I, I guess I shouldn't know the New Day was going to do something. Well, the way they looked at him and said, Did someone want to explain this to Xavier? And like, he poked fun of it too. We thought he was going to say he just had a stone face looked at him, but they just went immediately into WrestleMania talking about. And the ice cream thing was a little weird at the end of them doing that segment, but the, the fans just went just nuts for him. Austin Aries running against Tony Nese. One the discus elbow. Or forearm. And after that, Neville came out and said, um, Neville rumors came out. And I, just, I don't remember scheduling an interview with you, Neville. This is an interview where he says, I'm going to obliterate you. And he says, Why would I even bother? He says, You know, Aries is beneath him. And Aries says, That was the worst interview you've ever, you've ever heard. And you know what? At WrestleMania, I'm going to end your perspective side of you being the king of the cruiserweights and stuff so I wish I would have gotten a little bit more of it I just like the only wrestling pro somebody told me like the only pro wrestling segment that made sense on here that was decent and down to the point but I don't know that's like they haven't paid attention on this few ever since last week or two <sighs> get a little tired uh Emma Emma, evil Emma coming back, who gives a shit, I don't care anymore. She comes here, most likely it'll be WrestleMania, so she'll get a big pop. Uh, next thing, I think we're near the main event, which we were already at, like, what, the 9.50 to 10 o'clock mark was Roman Reigns versus Braun Strowman. And I called this match, and I was hoping the crowd was going to hijack the show, this, especially hijack this match, but... There's also the Roman sucks chance of let's go Roman. It didn't turn to we want to take their champion, but dude, I know what's gonna happen. They're gonna do the match. Roman looked like he'll get ne nearly a win to beat Braun Strowman again, which they should have done all this at fast life, protecting Strowman in the street, but he was gonna beat him up, and when he gets to that spear, or whatever, Undertaker's gong goes out, and yes, it did go out. I mean, the match wasn't even that good between Strowman and. Uh, Roman anyway. I honestly the fast lane match is actually a better match. This was like eh. It's like what's the point of this? He already beat Strong. Who gives a shit? He beat him now. He beat his record. What was the point of doing this match again? 
because like you said, they're gonna beat him here. And Undertaker looked at both of them. He showed up in the ring, big holy shit chance. He broke out. He looked at both of them, and he picked. He looked at Strowman and pretty much picked them up and choke slammed them. But then when Undertaker choke slammed him, took down Strowman. Undertaker had like a very frustrated look on his face, like he was like, like. Fuck it, like, I gotta take this fucking spear, it looked like. He turned around, and Roman Reigns speared him, and, like, like, Undertaker, like, he didn't want to take the spear, he just, like, as soon as he finished choke Sam and Strowman, he was like, fuck, why did I turn my back on this guy? He turned around, and immediately got speared by Roman Reigns, as Reigns looked at him, but Undertaker sat back up, and pretty much did his throat thing, and his music played, which now we will go into this yard, yard, whose yard is it here? So, yeah. But... I don't know, really like Stromer's just getting there to get beat up just to go so they can put this whole uh, Undertaker and Roman thing over. But um, after he took out Strowman, though, no, you just look at Undertaker's face, he just looks so frustrated at the end, like, like, motherfucker, I gotta take this spear. <laughs> Why am I gonna take the spear from this guy? He looked like, he said, I should never turn my back on him, but I'm like, I turn my back and didn't. Turned around, he just got speared to the ground, and so that was the end of Raw after that. But Undertaker's price face was just priceless at the end after he ch hit, uh, hit Strowman with the choke slam. Now, a lot of people say Undertaker looked hurt out there and stuff, like he looked hurt after doing that, he may have hurt himself. I just thought he looked pissed because he was like, Motherfucker, why did I turn my back on this guy? And then it was like, He just frustrated, so Why do I have to take a spear from him? But that's what I felt it looked like. I didn't think he was hurt or nothing. <clears throat> but you never know. But that's that's how um, that went. But R Raw tonight was just Raw shitty. Raw's a fucking bad show. But then again, are we really surprised if Raw's a fucking bad show and we're at this long way from WrestleMania? And these guys think they're gonna top fucking Wrestle Kingdom? <laughs> Fat fucking chance. There ain't be no Kata and Omega. So that 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 was pretty much the show tonight. It's just. Crowd literally just went hijacking the show. I thought we were gonna hear what we want more, we want more more we want page chance. We saw what was gonna happen with the new day and they they look like they handled it well. There was a lot of hijacking, a lot of CM Punk chance, a lot of the crowd not giving a fuck about matches. Very random quick women's matches that no one cared about that the fans started chanting. We heard a little bit about Seth Rollins' knee, I know that. But we heard those chants, we heard those chants, I said punk, I said the page ones, the new day ones, asshole chants, women tonight, really caring. So Mojo and Sami Zayn had a pretty, pretty good match, I'll say that. Um, Gals and Anderson, who gives a shit about them, Cruiserweights, who cares in a way, except maybe one with Austin Aries in it. Goldberg and Lesnar, there was just too many videos, I didn't care after a while. So, um... It wasn't really going a lot around the day of this show, and like I said, we're always ass. It's almost like who gives a shit at this point, so it's pretty much, um, it's pretty much fuck off. That's pretty much the, the point of this whole thing. It's just fuck off with this show. Fucking horrible. Like, it's just, it's just bad. It's just bad. So, that's pretty much everything I really had to talk about throughout this whole show. <sighs> Because I admit, I am tired from it. It just kind of drains you after the way. Almost like a life-sucking energy almost when I look at it. But it's like I said. We saw a lot of crowd chants. And people taking over the show in Brooklyn. That was like really main things. Because even I was wondering what that was going to do with this whole page thing. I would have expected more out of it. But we heard we want page. We want page. And they really went loud when the new day came on. Now, there was any other chance, I don't know. Maybe I'll look out, maybe I'll find out where the chance they chanted. But that's my raw review. So, I'm gonna roll. I'm out of here. Peace out. Comment, subscribe, everything. Check out my videos, live reactions, to Ring of Honor pay review, uh, final, uh, 15th anniversary. And check out my thoughts on the entire page situation. I'm not gonna explain anymore right here. Maybe even more detail comes out. I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen with more of these videos. We could expect more. We'll just have to find out and see. We don't know who this hacker is and stuff. But I'm not sure what's going to happen. 
but um, like I said, comment, subscribe, make sure you check out the show, everything, and uh, you know, just watch out for it. So I'm out of here. I'll see you guys later. Peace out.